Welcome to episode three of the Puck and Dragon, uh, when Larry met Matty. There we go, nearly got that wrong already. <laughs> <laughs> Puck and Dragon podcast, where we talk about all things dragon, so welcome gents. Thank you, thanks, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, so yeah, a bit, uh, bit of nostalgia today, I think, and uh, a bit of nostalgia that's, that's still going. Yeah, um, the old, the years old crew. and years and years. <laughs> <laughs> One more year, was it? One more year, I've been saying that for about ten. <laughs> It goes, goes quick though. I mean, I remember when we were sort of 14, 15, when we were playing sort of it was freeze and we were the young boys in the team and how quick it's gone. And now we're also not playing anymore and coaching. And you know, Larry's the, old, the oldest one in the team. It just goes so quick and it's unbelievable. It's you know, a little uh, twisted knife there. Yeah, but on the ice, you don't. in the league, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but on the ice, you don't. You, you, you wouldn't believe it. He's the oldest guy in here. On the team, but he's still the fittest. And you know, last year we, when he wasn't with us, um, it, we know we stay on special on day. So, you know, we're, look, we're lucky because I have the experience of someone so fit on our team as well. So, take us back to the very start. What sort of got into hockey, and what was the inspiration for starting? Mine was uh, started coming down here skating, and then just seeing the dragons advertised as games. Started watching games. And then just got into like a beginner session and got hooked. Started from then, six, seven years of age. And I've just been in, well, involved in the junior club right the way through. I'm still playing now. <laughs> How about you, Matt? No, I was about eight years old. My brother was playing and the team needs another goalie. I was playing goal in football and just uh, thought, yeah, fancy to go. And yeah, never looked back since, really. <laughs> yeah. And goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah, goal, yeah. It's, uh, it takes a different person definitely to be. Yeah, definitely. Never mind everybody says, but yeah, it's uh, it's got it's got you have a lot of responsibility being a goalie as well. But you got it's quite good to have that responsibility. And I enjoyed it. Yeah, good. I like yeah. that analogy. It takes a special mm. person. Yeah, yeah. It takes yeah. takes someone who's not yeah. quite normal in the head. Yeah. Yeah. You see all the special. goalies with the, when we're doing goalie sessions and things at the club, and no matter what age, you can see that yeah, they're all. They've all got something special, so. Yeah. <laughs> Such a nice way of putting yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> they got something special. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Um, and is it is it much different? I mean, we talk football to to ice hockey. What's the differences in the, in net minding? Obviously, it's um, you know it's the speed of the game is massive. I mean, it's changed. The game's changed massively for, as well from when I started playing. Not just the, the game, but the equipment as well. You know, the body I used to wear and I was. Like, Nine, ten years old, was sort of this thin. It was just, yeah. just basically a bit of sponge. You know, I had a player's helmet, which, again, plastic, thin plastic. You know, got hit in the head. Now that's probably a bit, why I'm a bit daft now. for the headshots <laughs> when, I was, when I was eight, nine, ten. And you know, I had no, yeah. I had a net guard and had a catcher which didn't close and things like that. And we, we had, it wasn't like goalie shorts. You see, the, like, see the kids now. They've got all the, you know, sort of top of the range looking gear. And um, it goes think for players as well. You know, we had. You know what the players have now with the sticks and things, and you know, it's a exp- very expensive sport, but especially for the goalies as well. Yeah, yeah. no, I've, I know. It, uh, <laughs> my lad's been told mm. not a chance you go near it as a net man. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. uh, far too much. Mm. But yeah. yeah, but like I say it's just changed. Like, and even like the speed, and you see the, the kids now, like the juniors, the shots they have at sort of 10, 11, 12, you know, they're picking top corners and things like that. When you know, we were under 12s, it was, it was none of that, but it was all wooden sticks with hardly any curve on. So it's, uh, it's it's like anything, I suppose, with technology and things move the game on massively, yeah, especially yeah. from a young age. Yeah, Monk, Monkey was telling us that he never used to have kid size sticks as well. Mm. He used to have to add adult, adults and yeah. Uh, yeah. chop them down, down yeah. and sticks. Yeah. yeah, and like the weight, like the weight of the equipment as well. You know, if somebody hands me a leg pad now, a goalie, you could just, you just lift it with one hand. I remember pick, trying to pick mine up when I was like ten, just trying to lift them up to put my leg. It was, uh, but then having to move around the ice with those on, it was. Uh, yeah, it's probably why I've got bad hips, knees, and everything now. <laughs> yeah. but you got to be really flexible, being a netminder. Yeah, so you, yeah. It was, yeah. Um, even yeah. sometimes when I would make a save, I never, th- I don't, I think how to get to that. A lot of the time, you never, th- you never really think you're that sort of flexible. But, uh, but yeah. But again, it's, it changed again how, how athletic some of the goalies are coming through, and it's not just like we used to train half ice on a Friday night, but now the kids they get a couple of hours a week goal, goal specific training. Um, and they do gym stuff and things as well, so it's, it's moved on so much more now. Yeah, big credit yeah. to the club as well. Yeah, it's just great. Doing, what Snip has done with the, the sort of junior club, I know Larry's involved with the um, the juniors as well as one of the coaches. But they, you know, what they built from from going back to COVID to now, the numbers is uh, in every age group is really really good, and they're, they're all they're, you can see the progress over the last 12, 18 months of the the players as well. How much they've all come on. Yeah. Yeah. 
and your coaching as well, Mark. Yeah, doing the tens and twelves this season coming. I've done the same in last year, so it's good to be involved. Obviously, my two kids are involved; they're playing. But like Matty said, it's good how, how we've got it back to the numbers we've got now. How many kids want to play hockey and get involved? So it can only be good moving through all the age groups, and eventually, hopefully, a lot of them end up playing senior hockey. And you're both juniors here as well. Yeah. Yeah. How's, yeah, yeah. how's it different now from, from back then, apart from the equipment? Much changed. Ice time's probably the biggest thing. I think ice time probably the biggest thing. We just used to get an hour a week and train all in like big groups. In the, but now it's all like tens of tens are on their own, twelves are on their own, fourteens get their own session. So when we started, it was all a lot of the junior sessions were all together, weren't yeah. they? From like twelves to sixteens. There's only so, there's only twelves <coughs> there's only twelves and sixteens. Like you said, then wasn't there? There's was no tens, yeah. fourteens or. Um, 18 or anything like that so it was um, it was only half ice so like an hour on a on a Friday that was that was all we got and there's no like they got the shooting room now and things like that as well and they do yeah. half ice stuff so they um, yeah it's, it's come on lots yeah so like you say new different equipment new equipment different facilities um, all changed so I suppose really we should take a take a moment actually to say Slightly different venue today. Um, we are actually in our skate shop, so obviously anyone does need any equipment and wants to get into the spark. What does Al's bring for us as a as a club partner? It's just during games. It's all sort of four games. It's massive. You know the guys up here bringing skates and things and getting sharpened. And you know if the guys need equipment and then it's advice as well. I don't I don't know nothing about the equipment. It's like it's moved on so much. But Pete and all the guys here, they they're sort of experts in it. Um, and they help the help the team out massively. You know, yeah. it's uh, really massively important. On the Sunday night, or sorry, Saturday night, we could have a game. One place could lose an edge, but by the time we're on Saturday, Ange, Pete, or whoever, will just sharpen the skates, and they'll be they'll be in the stall. And that, that Reese's um, Stout helps yeah. with that as well because he's here getting the skates up to to be sharpened for the guys when they get in the room. So a massive, massive part for us. Yeah. So you enjoy having Reese around. He's not a nightmare. Sure. Yeah, he's a good lad. <laughs> he's a good lad. Yeah. He's, re- he's yeah. a really good lad. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's you know, he's sort of took it on out of nowhere, really, and, and learnt on the job. And you know, he's a he's a big part of the team as well. Like I said, he's the, on a Sunday, I'll often send me a text message at like half ten in the morning. So, what colour are we playing in today? I think it's yeah. half ten. He's he's here, sort of hanging kits up because we've been away the night before or hoovering the floor. So yeah, he's a it's a massive part. And we're very lucky uh, as a club as well to have someone like Reese. I don't think. Our level, a lot of teams have an equipment manager who do those sort of things for you, and, and then our skate shop as well, who wears support so well. Yeah, awesome. he does a lot. Of, he does a lot of stuff behind the scenes that probably doesn't go noticed all the time. So without people like that, you don't really have. Or you, you do have a club, but all the little jobs don't get don't get done. So yeah, he's a massive massive part of the team, and he's he's fitted in really well. To be honest, with the lads in the room, so. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a, a big a, person, isn't yeah, he? He's, he's a top lad. And I'm, a, I'm assuming by fitting in with the rest of the lads, then you're saying that the rest of them are a bit um, <laughs> special. Yeah, I think um, yeah. I think you, you assume every team's different to yours, but I think it's the same. I just think hockey players are just all um, the goal is just extra special, but hockey players are just special, and you know the group you have, and you spend a lot of time with each other as well on bus trips to Whitley Bay, and you know we've done it since we were eight or nine years old, yeah. so. You spend a lot of time with these people. It's just a special group. Yeah, I think I found one of the biggest things I found, um, you know, doing. Like I say, I've started a lot later than you, <coughs> <coughs> nearly forty. Um, <coughs> but it, it seems really inclusive, and and everywhere I've been, all the basic sessions um, with the rec teams that we've we've been down with. Um, yeah, I, I've always been fascinated and amazed by just how helpful and inclusive. And it, it it's never been one of them sports that I've come across where you sort of get the people who. They think they're great, and you sort of feel a bit anxious about mm-hmm. it. Um, and you know, it must be the same with the kids. Yeah, it is. With we just like being, just getting everyone involved. I think everyone feels part of a, I say, a family sort of thing. Everyone wants to be at the rink, and then when you're in teams together, you always want to play for each other. So, I think, like Matty said, you spend that much time with each other, you do create good friendships and. It is like family, really, at the end of the day. And that's what you'd like to introduce into the juniors as well, so it becomes part of that, so they all get that growing up as well. So, yeah, I think that's where that comes from. Yeah, and uh, obviously family players that you played with. Um, who, Who's going to be, if you had to pick one player across your entire career, 
um, who would be your, your favourite player that you've played with? Played with? I'd say when I was at Manchester, probably Rick Babant. He was player coach there. I think he was just on a on a different level. And just when I when we went well when I went to Manchester, I was only uh, 19, 20, so still young, still learning, especially that that level of game as well. Yeah. So just learning off someone like that was really good for me. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going back to Manchester as well. I'll see. You got Tony Hand. You know, as a, as a player wise, he was. You know, even he was sort of towards the twilight of his career, but he was still putting up massive numbers you know, in the elite league at the time. Um, and you just you know, practice with him every week. You know, a nice hockey legend in the UK and the first guy drafted things like that. So that was special. And the goalie Jason Wolf played with there. I was only young as well, sort of 20, 21, and um, he took me under his wing, and I learned, learned a lot from Jason. So. Uh, yeah, was, that was uh, that was really good. Brilliant. Who's the best you played against? <sighs> I'd probably say Johnson, Jonathan Weaver. Yeah. Yeah. When he was he was at Newcastle at the time, and I didn't play a lot when I was at Manchester, but I do remember getting in against him and him coming down, and I was thinking, oh, oh. but yeah, I managed to stop the shot. So yeah, it was uh, yeah, and he was you know again he was another great great British player, so it was nice to nice to see you've done that. Yeah. What about you, Bob? I'd say a uh, player called John Craighead. Played for Nottingham when I was at Manchester, and he was just a big guy that just took no prisoners. Played the game the right way. Just really tough to play against. So yeah, I'd say I'd say him. Yeah. So did you play play for Manchester together at the same time? No, just yeah, three times. Separated by by year. Mark played first, and they had a year off, and then I I played the year after that. What was that experience like for you? Playing at that sort of level? Really good, to be honest. We trained pretty much every day. The games was. Three three games a week, more or less. So it was just it was just a good experience to be in that like professional environment. Too. Taught me a lot, uh, and just playing with them players who have been pros for however many years. Some of them have been pros for five years. Some have been pros for ten years. So just to learn stuff off them, being on the ice every day with them was a great experience. Yeah, so I think it's quite easy to forget it's their job as well. You know, you know, coaching here, you have, it's not really pressure, but you think like the coach you have at elite league, it's their job. You know, if you don't get results, you lose your job. Yeah. So it's there's a lot of pressure. You got get results, get people coming to watch and things. And when I played at Manchester, we didn't have a rink at the time because it was being built. So luckily for me, we were training here, so yeah. it was nice and easy. Only sort of down the road, but it was uh, seeing that the sort of the, how people handle themselves professionally with off the off ice stuff again as well and before games and just some of the mannerisms of the guys as well how they handle themselves you know on, on their ice and how they treated each other you know whether you're a top line player or you know I was a backup goalie everybody sort of treated each other as as equals and it, everyone was supposed to be going for the one goal to try and, try and win which was uh, you know it was tough but it was like I say it was so so tough training every day and at games I mean I was really I was doing opening closing the door every night so what's it <laughs> <laughs> And I found it yeah. tough, you know, it's just on the, the, yeah. the travel's even worse, you know, like you fly to Belfast, you come back, get a butt on a bus down to Badenstone, and you come back and play another game on the Sunday, so travel's probably probably the hardest thing of that. Yeah. 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 What about the travel now on the, the bus with, with this lot? Yeah, it's, yeah. That's, probably the best, that's probably the best part of it, really. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, there's plenty, of, especially when you have new guys on the team, it's good to get them on the bus, and they, you know, you're on a bus for two hours, so you get to sort of get to know each other and things like that as well and every size their own sort of seats on the bus um, I'd be on two seats that's it <laughs> don't sit, if Beba makes sells out the whole bus I'd just say I'm driving <laughs> not sitting next to anyone <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah it's a, it's a good good part of the part of being away like I say you, you're away from your family as well so you've got to, you, you have to enjoy it you know if you're not enjoying it someone else the point of being away because you, you spend a lot of time away from the family in this sport okay. yeah. what's your favourite away team to go to then bus journey or not uh, I'd probably say the Blackburn, not so much the rink, but I think just the atmosphere it creates when you go there, they probably, I think if you ask some of them players, it's the question they'd probably say when they come here, yeah. just the derby game, there's a bit of rivalry, they always have good crowds there, so I'd say I'd say Blackburn probably. Yeah, both sets of fans travel well as well, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, we get a good following, yeah. so they get a good gate, the rivalry between the two yeah. clubs, so witness is all always good as well they obviously because it's a smaller rink as well it feels sounds louder yeah. so yeah I'd say the the derby games for me I'd say the uh, old drink or old drink yeah. I used to really like going there I just used to play quite well there and the other rink was Solial always, it's, I just got off place I used to play well that so uh, yeah they're the, probably the two yeah yeah 
and uh, we're just talking about witness witness the actual the actual ice is smaller um, what do you prefer do you prefer a bit a bit more room on the ice or a smaller a smaller ring to play on me personally prefer bigger ice yeah yeah I don't know just I feel like you get more time uh, so the likes of our ring Blackburn places like that I prefer prefer rinks than like the witness and yeah. yeah I prefer a bigger ice pad to play on yeah. Absolutely. It's it's a goal. Yeah, well, the goal is it's, yeah. it's different as well because yeah. you you prefer somewhere similar to your own ring because you've got depth off the balls and things like that. So I always used to prefer um, you know the, the the bigger rinks, but uh, I didn't mind the smaller rinks. You get plenty plenty of action as well in the smaller rinks, even like Sir Grimsby. Yeah. And all small that places. I didn't mind playing there really. So. Okay. So just talking about the teams. Obviously, there's a group of lads to play with now, and, and you're coaching. How do they compare to? Maybe ten years ago to the lads, is there anyone that sort of would would fit in down there well, or the opposite way around? I think it's just a, it's like a different generation thing, yeah. isn't it? There's some stuff that probably happens 10, <laughs> 10, 15 years ago that if happened now, you'd you'd probably do jail for. <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're well, going back to like yeah. when we were starting to play. We had Alan Steele, Richie Amos, and um, people like that, sort of. Sort of playing, so obviously like, people <coughs> probably know them as well. Yeah. Um, what how they sort of then um, you know Alex Parry's dad's Pazza as well. You know they they were uh, you know Richie and Al Steele are, are definitely they're definitely different people. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure they get away with being <laughs> on our team. <laughs> and like, like, like Larry said, and they'd probably uh, yeah they'd probably be a bit bothered if they played for us now. Anything <laughs> mm. you can share? Yeah. <laughs> probably <laughs> not. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was all I mean honestly it was all part of parcel and that when we were growing up and you know, we watched some of them guys play for the for the dragons then and it was freeze and then playing the same team with them. Um you know, even I remember being sort of fifteen going playing Launchingham and then um, local derby game and Alan Steele going and we're only fifteen year old kid playing senior men's hockey and just saying to me, Don't be rubbish tonight. I was like, oh, thanks for the confidence. <laughs> Um, I played well. I got man of the match. We won. So, um, well, but yeah, but so it worked. You say it worked. But work, but, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a total, total different game. But I think like everything's different, I suppose, isn't it? From yeah, sort of yeah. ten, fifteen years ago. So who wouldn't get in the team back then? The ones that play now. Who, who wouldn't get that in the teams back then? Uh, it doesn't want, don't want yes. <laughs> yeah, don't to be honest, I'm boss. not going to throw anyone <laughs> under the bus <laughs> for like ability wise, but. Banter-wise, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, Ryan would have flourished twenty years ago. Banter-wise, yeah, he'd have flourished in a changing room like, like that. We were all, all sank as one of yeah, yeah, one of Steely or yeah, um, would have been James sink or swim. Him. Yeah, <laughs> would have been one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need to get Ryan on, don't we? I think. Yeah, I'm not so, so sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Common theme, isn't it? I don't know if HR will allow Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. Have to, uh, we'll put an application in yeah. soon. Yeah. See what comes back. So we asked um, Ollie on the last podcast as a netminder, did he enjoy um, the penalties? He said he, he really enjoyed it. How, mm. how do you feel when you're facing that penalty? Yeah, I like, enjoy it. Like, so I like the yeah, uh, like the responsibility and the pressure of being a goal in be a penalty shot, or I even liked when it was when we were killing five on three penalties and things like that. I like the um, I like that responsibility, or you know, playing in a game where it's just, you know it really, really means something. Play top, where you play a top of the league team. Things like that. Um, you know, if you go into a team, you know you're going to win sort of ten one, ten two. You know, it's a bit sort of meaningless, but the, the tough games is the ones I really like playing. Yeah. Well, now, how do you feel about them penalties now? <laughs> <laughs> now you stood on the bench and watching them. Well, our goals you did really well. I think uh, about both of them saved. I think all three of them actually saved penalty shots this year. So um, yeah, and, pa- and penalties we yeah we did, we did okay, sort of, especially towards the end of the season. Um, but yeah, not so much when I'm on coaching. Don't really like the five on threes. No. <laughs> what about you, Mark? Do you relish taking penalties? Uh, penalty shots. Mm. Uh, to be honest, across my career, I haven't really took that many. Yeah. But I mean, if if I was asked by a coach or I'd, I'd volunteer myself to, I wouldn't shy away from it, sort of thing. But I haven't really took that many across across since I've been playing. But I think the more popular now, if it goes to overtime and. When it's a few years back, it was just a draw. That was yeah. that was the end of it. But yeah, if I needed to take one, I'd I'd quite happily take one. Yeah, yeah you miss, you miss, you score, you score. It is what it is. <laughs> no pressure on yourself. Mm. No. <laughs> and if you're giving advice to the kids, what 
what would you give to the kids in that situation? In that situation, just do what do what comes comes natural to you. Whatever whatever move you think you're going to make, just do it. Don't change your mind last minute. If you're at the red line thinking you're going to do this, just go down and do it. Same yeah. for the red line as much. Just pick a. Yeah, I'd just say don't don't commit too soon and just uh, yeah, just stay calm and yeah, relaxed. I think sometimes, especially goalies, if they you know they get a bit uptight and they're all they're all stiff, but they give just calm and relax, and you know you'll be fine. Um, Good. Yeah. Um, big news just been announced as well. Um, CCM sponsor for for the kit this year. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you guys think of that? Obviously, CCM a big make. As you can see behind us, plenty of CCM kit there. Yes, yeah, I think it's brilliant. You know, we've got the we've got the gloves we. We run helmets practice on Wednesday, and they look great. They've got the stitching in, the logo, and on the uh, on the cuff there. Um, I know Mike Lancey's worked really hard with CCM, with the gloves, helmets, spanks, things like that. But getting them on board, um, and it's another you know from like from when Larry and I started playing to have a deal with gloves and helmets and things like that. Was, you know, you'd never dream of have anything like that, would we? Really? No, no. I mean, they look the gloves look great, and I think when everyone's in all the same gloves, same helmets. Stuff like that, I think it just looks more professional. So, yeah, it's really, really good to have as a club. There's not many at this level that can do it uh, or get the opportunity to to be able to do it. So I think as a club, it's really good. So on the equipment, uh, the helmets and gloves have been good. So, yeah, I think it'll be uh, good moving forward next mm. season. Especially helmets-wise as well, you think. Some players have had helmets for sort of 10, 10 years, even maybe even longer, and for to have a new helmet, Especially all the stuff about concussions. It's I know Mike Clancy said that was you know, some uh, really important thing for him and the and people in the uh, background the club back to on that as well. That, uh, yeah. that having something making sure the players were safe. Same with the net guards. The club sort those out last year. Um, safety is a you know a massive important one well, of the most important things for us. Really, you mean know, you want all your players. You know it's not their job. You know you want to make sure they all you know go home. We had safely. We had a few bad injuries last year, which uh, were the worst part of the season really. Yeah. So, the question. <laughs> Our favourite part of this, isn't it, Steve? <coughs> so, we have to start one, bench one, and drop gloves with one. That would be your teammates who's going to be starting off. First, first name down. Start, as in a start, start player. pick first, yeah. First, first player first on your team player. sheet. First player first on the line. team. First player. I'm going to go Alex Parry. Yeah. Yeah, I just think he plays. Plays with the right attitude every week. Uh, always gives 110. percent Pretty skillful as well. So I'm going to say Pazza first one on the first one on the sheet. I'd, I'd have to go the same. You know, he's been coach's player last two years, and yeah. he was you see unanimous choice. He's you know does everything right. Never complains about anything. You know, he just he scores. You know, he, if he needs to fight someone, fight someone. He just you know, plays, I think just plays the right way and you can always, any situation you can count on him for as well, you know, if it's penalty killing, penalty shot, which, whichever, it, you can always count on him, he does, and he goes sort of, flies under radar a little bit as well, but last year he put some really good numbers um, and he's and he's really liked and sort of respected the change yeah. room as well. Great to watch, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Great yeah. To watch. What about between, obviously we'll get on to the next question, but between him and his dad, his dad back in the day, him now, who's, who you putting on first? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Steve's definitely yeah, tougher. I'd say, yeah, I'd say Steve, he's tougher. Yeah. 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 Go on then. Uh, drop him. <laughs> Who are you dropping one. out of the team? Get him on the bench. Uh, Ryan. Yeah, to be honest. <laughs> Ryan. Just, to just, be honest, I'm, yeah. I'm going to say Ryan as well. Just so I didn't have to listen to him in the change rooms, to be honest, in between periods or, or before a game. So if we could drop him before that game, yeah, I wouldn't have to listen to half of the stuff that comes mm. out of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd say Ryan. Are you dropping gloves with then? Who do you fancy yourself against? I'm going to say Bacon. Yes. <laughs> He's a big softy, really. Yeah, I'll say Bacon. Yeah, yeah. Matty. None of them really offer much of a challenge, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any of them. Yeah. Bring it on, yeah. If anyone wants a shot, they know where I am Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the cameras. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know really. I think uh I think Paz is again I like see he's pretty he's pretty tough. Um Snippers on the on, on the quiet is pretty tough as well. We've got a few who are uh, you know, are quietly um 
quite a tough one, our team. Yeah. We have some fun questions. Yeah. Um, our friend Reese, Reese Stout, asks, what's your favourite memory in the Dragons jersey? I'd say the playoff weekend that we won in Sheffield, I think 2015, 16 season. Tell no, 2005. We'd, we'd been freezing, wouldn't we? I don't, I don't know what year it was be. actually. Mm. The year we won the league and then won yeah. the playoffs, that double, uh, that weekend was pretty, uh, pretty special weekend to go through it. I think we played the Blackburn on the Saturday and then beat Widness in the final. So and then and we beat Widness to the league that year. So is that, is that the game they walked off the ice? Witness. No, that was the that was the last league game last of that league year. Game, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then we went to the playoffs, Sheffield weekend. We played the semi final the Saturday and the final the Sunday. So I'd say that weekend for me. Yeah. Yeah. I probably go a bit further back when Stokes was here and it was the freeze. Uh, it was the last game of the season against Blackburn and uh, if we won, we won the league and we weren't sort of expected to win the league. Sheffield had won it, I think it was three or four seasons on the run and uh, you know we just got to about halfway through the season, sort of Christmas time and realised we're doing really well here, we're winning almost every game, quite not comfortably but we're, 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 we're doing really well, we've beaten Sheffield's, Blackburn's, Nottingham's, we were to the top of the league and it was at home and, then, and the place was absolutely packed. Um, and I remember sort of studying the tunnel before we go out and even warm we could see all around it was netting then as well it was just absolutely crammed full I remember just before we were going out just thinking to myself <laughs> play good tonight please <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I probably had one of my better games and you know we, when we won the league and that you know the, I remember Stevie Fowler was the first one on the ice I still remember that now you know the, I think I was probably I think 19 maybe at the time and it was that was probably one of the best one of the best seasons we had and and that's a, you know, a really good side there. It was like Stokesy, Pete Founds in there as well. Um, so it's still some of the juniors, um, some of the, some juniors on that team went on to play sort of uh, quite a few, quite a few games to the Freeze and to the Dragons. So yeah, that was really nice. good. Nice. So Kelly's asked, um, what's the main differences between the game back then and now? He's mentioned the speed of the games changed a little bit. Is there anything else? I think the speed's obviously the obvious one. I think the penalties as a uh, has changed it. You can't really get away with that much now. And if you do get involved in stuff or get called for stuff, there's there's bigger bands nowadays than than what there was, say even five years ago. So you can. I think that some of the bands last year were people were missing half of the season. So I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, speed and the penalties for what gets called and the bands that go with it. That's probably the biggest biggest change that mm -hmm. I've seen. Bit softer, but a bit more technical. Yeah. A bit quicker. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, with the with the penalties, you can't get away with all the little sticking calls and stuff like that now. So it does. It gives people more freedom to play to play with speed and stuff. So yeah, and the technical ability has gone up. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say that's the biggest difference for me. Yeah, I'd say it's sort of similar. Like the physicality, the game's less. I think less physical than than it was. Mm. You know, let's like, say with the uh, as they're trying to protect players, which is quite right. Um, it's, it's totally, totally different now. Even from sort of three or four years ago, even go back to sort of when we first playing before sort of COVID to now, the game is um, it's much different. You know, it's you want it to be faster. Yeah, there be always going to be some physicality there, but I think it's just the onus on the, the player making the hit things. Like that I think it's good to sort of protect players. Um, you know, the dops thing. I know everyone complains about it, but I think it's got it's got a place for us. And then they'll, they'll probably have to always everything new. That's why we iron its kinks out. I think they'll get there with it, and it'll um, it'll be good for us, good for the yeah. sport. I mean, talk about um, talk about it being a, a faster game and, and mm. different um, different cuts on the blades now. Um, you know, when, uh, when did that come in? And, and uh, you know, Mark, do you get you know? Do you have a, a special cut on your blade, or or any, a cut you prefer? Or I'm just a little bit old school, to be honest. Yeah. I probably get me skate shot. <laughs> Sharp and six times across the season, and if I'm completely honest, I just bring them in here and give them to Pete and Ange, and I get what I give them. <laughs> <laughs> Make them work. <laughs> and most of the time, it's right. So, yeah. But I mean, I know what you mean. There is. I mean, some of our players now they're getting sharpened before every game. Uh, you get your blades profiled, so it's all. I think it's all just what that player prefers. But there is more stuff that's come in now. Yeah. And like you say, it's handy to have 
the experience of Pete and Ange mm. at our skate shop yeah. to be able to come in and say, you know, I want to be tight and turny, I want to be a bit quicker in a straight liner. I want to just not fall over constantly. Yeah. That's what I asked for, and they, they did me an okay <laughs> foot. <laughs> so, yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think going back, it was different for goalies as well. When I first started playing, it was like, your goalie skates need to be blunt because you need to shuffle around a lot more now. They need to be really sharp because of the pushing. Mm. And I used to, it must be like almost every two years, I used to get mine sharpened. I remember being at Manchester and the equipment guy, Paul Turner, he was a brilliant guy before a game. And I wasn't even playing, so I was only on warm ups. So I wanted to look good. So I've, I've sharpened your skates for you. I was fuming, I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to skate. I don't like my skates <laughs> being sharpened. The best grind I ever had at the time. Jumped on the ice, I thought, these are brilliant. <laughs> so you can do this every week. So, uh, but yeah, so like, like the profile and skates and things like that, I, I, haven't got, I haven't got a clue what do you just give them to Pete and Andrew, so you just sharpen them for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only standing there watching football so I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Got a question um, directly, directly for you, Matt. Um, Matt, you're known for your appreciation of a well marshaled game. Mm. So, <laughs> do you genuinely have a favourite official? And that's from uh, Moose. Yeah, I think, you know, I'll, I'll say you give refs our time. It's only, a lot of it's only banter at the end of the day. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're doing a good job. I think the ref, refereeing standard is really good at our level. Um, you feel for them a bit, and I said this to a few of them this year. I mean, we train at least once a week. You know, they train at the start of the season, that's it, they're off. They don't get training sessions, they probably get feedback and things, but you know, they're almost left on their own. But there are, so, you know, we had Ryder, who was a great referee, he's talked to us, Roy Hamilton, you know, there's a young lad, at, um, I think Anderson, he was great, thought he's, he's good, he's a young referee, it's good to see young referees sort of coming through and we, we need them as well. I mean, I mean, talk about goalie's been special, but you know, being yeah. being a ref for a line's been coming to D side <laughs> on a Sunday night, just <laughs> everyone's showing out, just because they're missing offside and you know, it's, you know, it's not the Stanley Cup, we're not getting a million pound bonus for winning, but um, yeah, it's the uh, but yeah, yeah. I think the uh, standard, and that's probably goes back to the difference again from sort of ten, fifteen years ago. Standard referee and officiating's uh, gone up, gone up a really a lot. So, and they're never going to see everything, and their angles always different to ours. And obviously, we're always going to think we're right, aren't we? So, yeah. you know, and yeah, it's at the end of every game you take your referee's hand, and you know, you have some good good banter with them. Yeah, however, it is. Um Genuinely a, a, a spectacle for anyone who's, who's never experienced this, depending on, on what side of the ice you come and watch, um, is uh, is Barry and his referee shout. And I do feel <laughs> sorry for their referees because you can see them double thinking, should they put their hand up yeah. in danger of him shouting, put your hand up if you're a clown, and they genuinely start hesitating. <laughs> it cracks me up yeah. every time. Barry was our manager when we first started playing. Was he? Yeah, I remember it um, being at Durham, and um, he wasn't too impressed pressing the referee. And he was hanging out with the balls with his glasses. <laughs> Shouting, referee, do you want these? <laughs> he's not, not going to change no. now. No. No. <laughs> it's funny. He has some corkers. Yeah. Yeah. Really cracked yeah. me up. Yeah. Um, for one, McKinney, teammate McKinney. Um, Barry, you're 42 years old. Why are you the fittest player on the team? It's not the ice bath. Just, just always, always kept myself in shape. I've always, I've never not gone to the gym or since I've been in juniors from like, I think under 16s, I've always been in the gym. So, I don't know, just always kept myself in shape. There's no, re there's no reason, special yeah. secret to it, to be honest. You just keep going. It's hard work and dedication, that's what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But the ice baths do help every now and again, I'll be, I will be honest. And that's only a new thing, so... Uh, yeah, just always, bones. I know, yeah, I've just always kept myself in shape, so yeah, yeah. I think that's the secret to still playing now as well, just looking after himself, and you know, we can still play. You know, we're, like two minutes to go to the game, we kill a penalty, you can, you can always chuck Larry out because you know he's yeah. he's fit enough to do it and kill a penalty, so it's, it's good having that and, and the experience as well as the, as the fitness. So, I don't feel fit on a Monday morning no more, but. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what the ice bath's yeah, for. That's, that's, yeah. that's a different story now, but I'm all right playing. Uh, McGinney also wants to know how many times has Matty washed Larry's back with soap? It's an interesting one. <laughs> hey, that's probably just a jealous question. No one is jealous. He's just jealousy because Larry, Larry kept pying him, so uh, probably t too many to mention, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I think we can wrap it up then. Um, Really appreciate you coming in. Obviously, the, the new setting, I think, looks great. Yeah. Um, massive thanks to Al as well, Al's, Al's Skate Shop. 
um, everyone working really hard for the team as well. So. Yeah, thanks to you guys yeah. as well. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks very much. Good for you, though. It's just it's all you know extra things for us. It's good, good coverage for for the team, not just the senior team, but the juniors as well. So thanks, appreciate what you're doing for us guys as well. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.